fight like you look. Ugly, but sloppy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to part four of Arise, Serpentor, Arise. Week-long Yojo June commentary on the channel, and today I'm joined by a very, very, very special guest. This is so awesome. Hans Chow. How you doing? <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Richard. How are you going? Excellent. Thank you very much for joining me. But the other guest is just as awesome. It is the daughter of the Sarge. It's the Slaughter Daughter. Kelly, how you doing? Hi, how are you? Excellent. This is very, very exciting. We're going to watch your dad kick some butt today. Yes. We are. And I'm very interested to hear what it was like growing up as the daughter of <laughs> the ultimate soldier, basically, on G.I. Joe. <laughs> so we are on episode four on the Hasbro YouTube channel. You can also watch it on Tubi. There might be some commercials that pop up. No sweat. Uh, we're kind of easy breezy here. Uh, we'll let you know what we're at. And uh, we're all queued up at zero. Right now on that episode, here's your countdown. It's going to be three, two, one, play. And when I say play, press play. Ready? Ready. Three, Ready. two, one, play. Here we go. Yo, Joe. Yo, Joe. So, Kelly, my uh, first question I want to ask is, did you get a chance to watch this um, when you were a little slaughter daughter? You know, I really did not watch a lot of G.I. Joe growing up. Um, I did watch the movie, but it was, um, I fast forwarded it <laughs> and it just watched all his parts. <laughs> well, that's actually the best way to watch it. That's pretty much the only, <laughs> the best, the best parts are your dad's parts. Shame. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, uh, you definitely don't want to watch it for Falcon. Um, so your dad, a huge wrestling superstar, crossing over onto G.I. Joe, do you remember anything about that um, that opportunity when it arose and your dad not only being a, a big hero in wrestling, but now a superhero on a, 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 like a weekday cartoon? Yes, I was pretty young when all of that went down. So I don't know that I really necessarily knew the um, weight of it. Or like mm. really what was happening um but yeah i don't i don't i don't think i knew like that there was he left wwf to, at the time to go to gi joe and then was then wrestling with um awa i believe so yeah. he was just wrestling like i you know what i mean i didn't really know the details at the, yeah at the time the, the promotions didn't really matter much to you but later on now um, what's it like seeing your dad is a freaking superhero. Like he can destroy an army of bats sing like barehanded. He doesn't even need a weapon. <laughs> now, now that you're, um, you know, grown up and watching this cartoon is basically this archive of your dad's adventures when he was younger. Um, he's not just a character. A lot of people know him as the GI Joe, the first real life GI Joe, but going through this week and watching these, I, I am reminded that he is not just a G.I. Joe. He is the ultimate soldier. He is the ultimate warrior, which is ironic because he's <laughs> the man that beat the ultimate warrior for the <laughs> Lavender Championship. I guess that was fitting. But uh, it just must be so cool. I guess it's more of a statement than a question. But it must be so cool to see your dad here save the world against the ruthless terrorist organization known as Cobra. Yeah, it is pretty cool. It is really cool. It would have been really cool if it could have been live action in the movies they did. Yeah, we all wanted him to show up as a, you know, at least a cameo as, I guess he wouldn't be a general. I don't think Sarge would accept the yeah. promotion to Egon's. Well, he even said that they had um, this whole thing where they were going to show his campaign cover and just to kind of give an homage and it was going to be a whole thing with a bunch of um, like the older Joes that they weren't going to show in the series and just like an homage to them. And they couldn't even do that. Hmm. I wonder so. why that is. Rights issues yes. probably. Yes, exactly. Yeah, always with the rights. That's the trouble, right? Like when, mm -hmm. when you got this crossover character, it's, it's cool when it happens, 
but to keep it happening is sometimes more difficult than getting it to happen in the first place. Yeah, he uh, wanted to do it. And even if they were just going to use his campaign co cover and he wasn't in it, he wanted to do it. But WWE was like, mm, you can't. That again. <laughs> that again. Yeah. Now, Hans, what are your memories about uh, Serpentor? What'd you think of the new Cobra Emperor coming in and taking over from uh, Cobra Commander? Oh, I did not enjoy him as much as I enjoyed Cobra Commander. Um, I, I, I liked, he was kind of wacky. Now, if you break him up into the comic book appearances versus the show appearances, I, I loved him in the comic book. That was a wonderful kind of, you know, parallel. Okay. But in the in the show, he was he was goofier than than Cobra Commander, and I I don't think Cobra needed more goof. I mean, as we look at the screen right now, look at what their lead scientist is dressed in. You know, yeah. I mean, come on, man. You, and then you put a guy in a stick. I will say this, when Sergeant Slaughter did fight him, they looked the part. It looked like, you know, you know Rattlesnake Jake or somebody fighting, you know, Cobra Commander. Sorry, fighting Sergeant Slaughter made sense because they're yeah. both in costume. But... And with Mindbender, uh, Kelly, what's your what's your opinion on this um, this fashion choice? Should you be allowed to wear a cod piece with a cape? <laughs> and a monocle. I almost forgot the monocle, bald head, and a mustache. We'll be seeing Mindbender in a moment here. <laughs> Look at this. Um, Look, this so we might not be in sync here, but uh, your dad, this is so cool to say instead of the Sarge, as I've always called him the Sarge, <laughs> your dad, what a thrill for me, is undoing a screw with his Man. thumbnail. <laughs> this. He used to do that at home where he would try to. <laughs> What, you know, oh my God, that's amazing. Dude, what kills me is the description that Cobra Commander used. He says, that man is built like a vending machine. He's, <laughs> he's, he's got the constitution of a vending, of a vending machine. machine. That's it. It's just oh amazing. Goodness. It's amazing. Yeah, And there's Mindbender. We just saw him yeah, a moment quite ago. quite the outfit. Quite Unbelievable. The outfit. He does not miss his workout days at all. He is just... Ugh. That's the other strange thing that he's bare chested and just built. <laughs> he's one of the best built bad guys on the show. He's such a, it's like they threw everything at the wall and everything stuck. I'm like, okay, I guess <laughs> he's got a mustache and a monocle and a six pack and a cape and a cod piece. <laughs> he this, could put his own DNA in there. So where we are in the story here is Serpentor is being assembled using DNA from ancient military geniuses throughout history. And they didn't get one of them. Joe's um, foiled Cobra's plan. So one of them was missing. So they went, well, if we can't get that incredible soldier from the past, let's just use the ultimate soldier today, Sergeant Slaughter. And they got a little bit of his DNA. And, but I, I was very happy, actually, and I still am, that a piece of Sarge didn't end up in the main bad guy. Because it just, I was trying to find the right word for it. It's kind of like a violation, like to... Yeah. To use your DNA to create a bad guy who's going to hurt people, it's like, it doesn't matter how big a hero Sarge is, there, there's that piece of him running around that he has no say over. It's like being cloned, right? And then, mm. oh no, what's my clone up to now? So I'm glad that um, the man who wrote the damn thing decided, uh, no, we're not going to go down that route. They're going to come close, but uh, we're not going to go all the way. Is this is it true that um, despite Sergeant Slaughter being in this, he had a, something in his contract saying he could never use a firearm? He, he well, he uses one in one of the previous episodes. Actually, does he, he? Uh, yeah, I believe it's episode one. He points a gun at Zartan. Does um, he? He does. He does. And I was surprised because I but don't he remember. He doesn't shoot. Right, and I'm. He never pulls the trigger. 
I'm drawing a blank here if he's just like blindly firing with the other Joes at a group of Cobras, never hitting anyone. But um, yeah, that that I could see that being a thing based on him being a real life Joe. And I mean, uh, a great story I remember hearing about your dad, and I always like to share it with people. Kelly is um, he uh, said on an interview show one time that he was having dinner and um, some little kid recognized him and. Obviously, he wasn't in the campaign cover and the fatigues and everything and, and the sunglasses and the whistle. He's just having having dinner. But a kid recognized him still, and uh, he, uh, he declined the, uh, I can't remember if it was a wine or some sort of alcoholic beverage. But it meant so much to him to be a role model for kids to look up to. They're very impressionable. And, you know, if the kid sees the Sarge downing a glass of wine, as harmless as that you know, a glass of wine is, that's how much it meant to him. And to me, that's his intensity. You know, we hear his intensity in the, in the voice acting in this episode, we saw it in the ring and a different type of intensity, not like raging and powerful, but, um, ethics, you know, intensity of ethics. Like that's, mm -hmm. I don't need that right now. Someone's watching and it might mean the world to that kid that that might've been CM Punk. Who grew up and decided, hey, I'm going to be straight edge and not drink, uh, do drugs or smoke because because this guy said, no, not cool. That's true. Could be. Well, we're about to see a uh, real throwdown between your dad and this uh, monster that's supposed to be Serpentor, but uh, it's been sabotaged by Cobra Commander and um, probably remind you of some of the matches if you ever got to see your dad wrestle. I did get to see him wrestle. Um, not too much when I was younger. Cause it, he wrestled the iron Sheik one time and my sister and I got really upset <clears throat> yeah. because he brought out a weapon. <gasps> your, your dad, did? There, he's got a gun there. Yeah. See, so he'll hold them. He never pulls the trigger. Never mind these two guys. He these two guys it. about fair about to get killed, though. <laughs> I, he the, he the, uses this it guy, as a bat. This guy, right, look at him. These guys, oh, look, there's Sergeant Slaughter. And these guys are dead. Look, here it comes. I, I do They're recall dead. Sarge using, like, <laughs> rifles as a bat and smashing people over the head with them. Yep. And the dreadnoughts. So the Iron Sheik had a weapon in the ring mm -hmm. and he would put it in his belt and then the ref would check his his uh, boots and then he would put it from his boots to his belt and the or from, you know, opposite yeah. way. And then he was checking his boots instead of his belt and all of that. My sister and I, I mean, we thought we were about to watch our dad get murdered. And I was like six. <laughs> so too, too young to be filled in on like the, this daddy's going out there to, yes. you know yeah to play and you know he'll he's fine it's you know and it's so. just too much for a kid there's been so many matches where they've shown wrestlers kids in the audience and it doesn't matter how much you try to explain once that intensity starts flowing and, and blood if there's blood it's you know it's a lot to take especially that's not a character up there that you're watching that's your father Mm -hmm. So hopefully you're not getting any bad flashbacks seeing the Cobras try to rough up <laughs> your dad <guys>. here. <laughs> Go, <I'm> dad. <laughs> Go dad. Go <laughs> dad. No, this is great. Did he uh, teach you the Cobra clutch? He did. Oh my God. That's awesome. <laughs> he did. He did te teach that to me. Have you ever had to use it? People ask me to put it on them. So, I mean, I, I, do. I don't mean a demonstration. I mean, like someone's honking at you. <laughs> oh. someone, cuts in, someone cuts in front of you at the supermarket, like Cobra Clutch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I might catch a charge if I do that. <laughs> <laughs> it would be very thrilling. Going, Come oh. on, could somebody bail me out? <laughs> I, I thought you meant very thrilling. Get a real charge. <laughs> catch a charge. That must be an American saying. <laughs> <laughs> so I picked this one for uh, for you because um, according to halfbattle.com, which tells you all the lines, uh, screen time that all these characters have had, Sarge has the most um, screen time, or, or this episode has some of the most Sergeant Slaughter in any episode. And he has a oh, one-man wow. army here. He's here just yeah, taking he out all the Cobras. All
this was so fun watching as a kid even now still like Sarge just fighting an actual monster get him dad <laughs> <laughs> What I appreciated about this, ouch. Um, that was a heavy punch. <laughs> yeah. And he gets thrown on the, uh, the only Sarge could get thrown on a tree stump neck, neck first and go, <laughs> shrug it off. <laughs> oh, I was hoping there'd be some uh, commercials from the 80s. Yeah. That would have been fun. <laughs> a kip up. I, I just got to the part where the Sarge does a kip up. I'm just imagining him doing that every morning, you know, before breakfast, kipping up out of bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Oh. Now I'm angry. Oh. Now I'm angry. <laughs> so in a, in a cartoon that's so careful about violence, he kind of just killed this thing. <laughs> <laughs> they, I mean, his name is Slaughter, and I remember as a kid, like I didn't know him from wrestling. I never, I didn't see him. And I, I just started watching WWF after he left, so I didn't know him. I remember this GI Joe showing up called Slaughter, and I thought that's that's isn't that a bad guy, Slaughter? That's a nasty thing, isn't it? Um, so I think this was maybe Buzz's way. I'm just going to speculate. Of letting this guy actually kill something, but it being okay in in a kids show, mm -hmm. instead of just destroying a thousand robots, he actually got to obliterate that beast and turn with it into goo. Driver. And with a pile driver, and with it turned into goo. <laughs> <laughs> I think and that's it, true to form. I think if Sarge was the pile driver, you would probably turn to goo. Do you would you say that the remnants of that monster would fit in an itty bitty ditty bag? <laughs> <laughs> You've probably heard that a thousand times. I, don't get it. I have, I have, but I don't mind hearing it again. Yeah, it's funny how you know, some of these lines spoken thirty years ago, like that's, yeah, yeah, that's the iconic line. Mm -hmm. There is slaughtering more robots. <laughs> <laughs> is it just me or is Mindbender's mustache getting longer? <laughs> He's like threatened by Sarge. It's like, I shall grow. I shall develop a super mustache formula. <laughs> Bad idea, Mindbender. You ain't using my mind. You to fight G.I. Joe. And I've said it often. His, Sarge, your dad's voice work is so good on this. It's so good. He, he stepped into a room with the best of the best, the Sunbow voice acting crew. Just listen, like they're incredible, and he he hung with them. Like yeah. it, it didn't sound like when some football player comes in and records some lines, or someone who's kind of out of their element. Like he he was kind of bringing them up. I think he was raising their intensity level, which is yeah. probably not what they were expecting. He's got that gravelly, yelling voice. It's good. And it's nice that the other Joes get to do a little bit this episode too. It's, I mean, Sarge is the definitely the highlight, but um, they don't forget that there's more members to the team. So, and they're actually uh, on a mission to try to rescue him. Mm -hmm. which, which feels like it's unnecessary almost at a certain point. <laughs> you would think he'd just pull the chains right out of the wall. And, oh, they're electrified this time. Yeah. <laughs> is that? Is that your dad's Achilles heel, electricity? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's his kryptonite. You ever have trouble with a toaster? <laughs> Gonna I, have uh, to call somebody else, Kelly. I, Don't do electricity. I, I'm not going to do a Serge impression because it's just on the off chance you might watch this. Sorry. <laughs> Love you, Serge. <laughs> so I might see him next year and he might put me through a table or something. Uh, everyone I've ever heard that has met Sergeant Slaughter has said, what an incredible, incredible guy. Just the best. I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've, had, you've had a good experience thus far. That's good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it must just be amazing that your father is Sergeant Slaughter and, you know, your, your kids, their grandfather is Sergeant Slaughter. Like, it's just an incredible thing to grow up. 
because no one else can really say that they can say well you know my my dad or my grandpa played hawk on gi joe that's what people say right play this play that but in the case of someone like sergeant slaughter it's kind of like roddy piper you know colt doesn't say my dad played roddy piper colt says my dad was roddy piper exactly uh, same with sergeant slaughter larger than life And another story I wanted to share, a quick one. Uh, speaking of Roddy Piper, one of my all-time favorites. Incredible, incredible guy. Absolutely broke my heart when he when he passed away. Um, but I remember him giving an interview one time. Roddy, I think, literally fought for his life as he was growing up. It, it was a really rough childhood from what he had shared. So he was very careful about who he invited into his home. And I remember him saying in an interview, very, very, very few people from the wrestling industry I've ever allowed to walk into my home and meet my wife and kids and Sergeant Slaughter is one of them. Mm -hmm. So when I heard that, I I thought that is a seal of approval right there. Yeah. And vice versa. We didn't really have a lot of wrestlers and outsiders coming to our home either. We had a few, but not a lot, but Roddy was one of them and his family, his wife and, um, at the time, I think they only had the two children when they came to visit. But how much did it break your heart when Roddy Piper joined Destro's Iron Grenadiers? <laughs> 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 you have no idea what I'm talking about, <laughs> Roddy. <No>. <laughs> um, uh, so, you know, some years back, I think it might have been right around the time your dad had that San Diego Comic Con exclusive. Mm-hmm. Uh, I forget it was like ten years or so back. Um, they did a, a thing where he got to have a couple more G.I. Joe's and Roddy Piper um, got a convention exclusive uh, Destro figure like Destro started his own army because he's Scottish and so it made sense that if Roddy was anywhere on G.I. Joe he'd be Scottish army so I thought that was kind of cool that Sarge and Roddy both got new G.I. Joe figures yeah that's cool we're saying this as Sergeant Slaughter takes out all of Cobra Command by himself <laughs> Gets hit with a pipe, complains that it dented his hat, and then headbutted scrap iron to be unconscious. Incredible. Whilst Chris Slaughter screams at Sergeant Slaughter to punch Dr. Mindbender out. This kind of stuff might not have happened at like parent teacher night, Kelly, but. <laughs> Her but... Kelly's got a bad grade. What can we do about that? <laughs> But still, that shouldn't stop you from telling people that's what happened. <laughs> what do you mean, F? <laughs> Whoa, what a, what a way to introduce Serpentor being reflected in Sergeant Slaughter's sunglasses. Yeah, that is such cool. a beautiful shot. Because they're really the, you know, they're the nemesis for each other. They're the polar opposite. And Sarge is the only one who can actually fight the super clone soldier and vice versa so uh i've never really noticed that shot before but it's a beautiful shot of like this ghastly ghostly figure from the past reflected in sarge's sunglasses yeah that was cool it was a good visual and that's it for episode four no it's not not to the psa well the psa (laughs) (laughs) oh it's with spirit that's great spirit could do every PSA and it would, I think, really hit home. He's just such a great character. Um, if Sergeant Slaughter were to have a PSA, what do you think? What do you guys think it would uh, be about? Stay in school. Stay in Don't school. Don't do drugs. What do you think, Hans? Yeah, that. Yeah. I don't want to say it. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I don't. You know what's funny? I think it would actually be, I mean, I don't know the man, but I feel if I'm, if I'm not to copy Kelly, it would probably be something to do with staying physically fit would probably mm-hmm. also be to stay, to stay healthy. Fitness. You know? Yeah. yeah. Does Does drill, I, the drill instructor would be the guy, yeah. right. To say, Hey, go for a walk. Yeah. But I, I, I mean, it, it, would, it would probably go exactly like I have it in my head and you know, like three or four kids are sitting on there watching TV and when the kid comes with a baseball bat, he's like, come on guys, let's go to some play baseball. He's like, nah, let's just sit here and watch more TV. And Sash comes in like through the window or like the Kool-Aid man through the wall. Psh, how about you guys go outside and do something physical? You can't forget that your body's not just a mechanism to transport your heads. 
No, we know. No, it's half the battle. Yeah, Joe. It's going to fix my wall. <laughs> Why'd you have, have to, to break the wall? <laughs> he just keeps breaking walls to get out. Where's, where's the exit? He's in the bedroom now. How do you get out of this place? <laughs> the mother comes in. Who's going to fix the wall? Oh, it's got to go. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, say no to drugs, stay in school type of thing. What would be fun is Sarge teaching kids the Cobra Clutch. Like, if someone gets up in your business, you grab them by one arm and you wrap it around and you pull the other one. <laughs> now I know. <laughs> I always wondered how, because like re- most wrestlers, especially like the ones of the golden oldies or the, the, you know the classic ones, they had like a, a professionalism about them sort of disappeared. As I find that we we progress more in wrestling, more they became more like uh, more like movie stars, almost divas a little bit. Mm-hmm. The professionalism he reflected in all his matches and whatnot, he, despite all the other wrestlers' attitudes and their various other vices and whatnot. Did did he ever get injured by another wrestler on purpose or by accident? Or did they all keep it very professional in the ring? Um, that's a great question that I do not know the answer to. <laughs> he just shrugged it off like when his <laughs> neck hit the tree stump. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he... Um, uh, I think he's he'll tell stories about different wrestlers that were um i think the term is stiffer they were stiffer than others where they would really get you um and there was um when he first started training and he was like in the barn in minnesota training with Vern Gagne. there was a guy there that was really rough to with him and almost broke his leg like was trying to break his leg and that was before he was even Sarge. Yeah. And that was, I guess, part of trying to pay your dues. I don't know. That's what they did to Hulk Hogan. Um, they, uh, when Hogan first started training, they broke his leg to test him. What? So it's it's madness. But yeah, they broke his leg and he came back months later, healed. And let's give it another go. Oh, you must yeah. be serious. Brutal. Different different time, different business. Yeah, he gets sure. sued today. You know, yes. you broke yes. my leg. Well, back then, I, I mean, Vern Gagne, I don't think he had much. So you weren't suing him for much of anything. You know what I mean? It's not like. Yeah. Well, he, he was a pretty uh, good wrestler himself, too. Yes. So, you know, he'd, he'd beat you up, put you in a sugar hole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before before we wrap up here, um, and, and thank you so much for taking the time today to do this. Mm. This has been so much fun. Absolutely. Thank you so much for um, having me on. Oh, my pleasure. My Thanks. pleasure. You too, Hans. Thanks. Thanks so much. It's uh, time is precious. Uh, so I appreciate yours. But uh, there's, uh, yeah, I talk about a lot about toys on this channel. So um, just wanted to ask uh, Kelly, you know, any memories or thoughts on uh, the, the toy aspect of your dad being Sergeant Slaughter? He's been many, many different toys, a lot of them wrestlers, but wrestling toys but also gi joe so um what was that like i'm sure you've been asked that a lot but you know what was it like that your dad is a freaking toy like this, <laughs> this superman super soldier type of toy i mean it's pretty cool and now that i'm older i can appreciate it more but back in the day i remember getting his gi joe and i think it got tossed to the side because it wasn't to scale with my barbies yeah. <laughs> So it was like a little toy playing with this big toy, or I'm sorry, action figure. I call them toys. Okay. <laughs> it keeps things in perspective. It stops me from, you know, whining. Yeah. <laughs> about a toy. <clears throat> so um, it it wasn't a scale, so I didn't play with it. And also, you know, if you had an action figure of your dad, would you play with it? Good point. You know, because it, it's just dad, right? It's like it's just dad. Like he was just my dad, and he's got this action figure. So back, and I was a kid, little, so yeah. I was not impressed at all. <laughs> <laughs> it took you 17 minutes to beat the sheik, dad. <laughs> Nap, napping on the job. Right. Can't even comb its hair. <laughs> <laughs> so you know. 
Articulation, smart articulation. My poor dad. I always say if he had only had um, one boy, <laughs> that would have been into G.I. Joe. And that would have been, or even if one, me and my sister, if at least one of us was into G.I. Joe, you know, and that kind of thing. I, I wish that he had had that, but he didn't have that. So we were just like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and wrestling, yeah, who wants to watch that? Like, <laughs> you know, my sister and I, we were not, we weren't fans. <laughs> that's, but that's what I've heard from most uh, kids of wrestlers. They're like, exactly what you said, like that it was just dad. And dad went off to work and then dad came home and, he, you know, dad, Bret Hart, didn't show up in the pink tights with the sunglasses and the greased hair going, hey, what's for dinner? Like, exactly. it's just, you know, you, you turn it off. At least the good ones can turn it off. You know, you get in trouble when you can't turn it off. Yeah, I think there were some that kind of um, developed their character and then became that character. And it was hard for them to step out of it. Um, but for my dad, he, my mom made it known. Like, you leave Sarge at the arena, you don't bring Sarge in this house. He's not welcome here. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, you know, it's funny because somebody asked me for a picture of my dad, like, at Sarge. And I was like, uh, I don't have any. Like, I, I'm going <laughs> to Google them and say and send it to you. And you can do that yourself. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Like, I don't have any pictures of my dad as campaign cover. I don't have a picture with him with that. I, you know what I mean? I just don't. Don't you mean hat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his hat. His hat. <laughs> <laughs> um, you mentioned earlier about stiff wrestlers, wrestlers working stiff or snug. That is the ultimate warrior right there. I know they um, they really laid into each other and, and an awesome moment from, uh, it was Ultimate Warrior's um, Hall of Fame induction weekend. And he unfortunately passed away like a day or two after that. But they did a, a documentary where uh, he actually meets up with Sarge. And um, I'm, I, I'm just such a big Ultimate Warrior fan and I'm a big Sergeant Slaughter fan. And um, to see them meet up and, you know, sort of just jut that giant jaw out, which, yeah, I'm such a big fan. Check this out. Not quite as big as the Sarge's. <laughs> nice. Not, not quite, but, you know, I, I try. But yeah. um, he gave the Ultimate Warrior a, a, a paper bag and they hadn't, I guess, seen each other for a while. So you're not sure where they stand. And... Um, Warrior opened up the brown paper bag and there was a potato in it. And Sarge said, you know, for old time's sake, because in wrestling, they call it when you accidentally hit a guy for real, it's called a potato. So potato. <laughs> you yeah. come back a potato for old time's sake. And I, I just thought of all the things to give him, that's the perfect gift to give a guy who just pounded on you and you pounded on him back. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, that is. Well, this has been a blast. So once again, thank you too so much for joining me. Thank you. It was fun. Lots of fun. Give Thank a couple you. plugs here. Uh, Hans, you got your artwork on Instagram, Hans yes. underscore Chow. That's correct. And I didn't get a chance to mention this whole the whole show, so uh, I'm glad I remembered. Uh, you did an amazing little sketch of Sergeant Slaughter with uh, yes. his, with his slaughter daughter, which I just yeah. I love that. Thank you. That was great. It'll be colored before Father's Day. Because I, oh, wow. I have four free days now, so I'm going to color it up. And I'll give it to Kelly and she can show it to her dad if she wants. Yes, and absolutely. It. I love wow. it. That's a sweet little piece. Thank and you. Um, And Kelly, uh, do you want to be plugging anything or do you want to remain in Cadino well... and retire after this appearance? <laughs> <laughs> you can find me on Instagram at Slaughter Daughter Official. And you can also find me on um, Facebook, Slaughter Daughter, or Kelly Slaughter. Um, and then on YouTube, I've got Slaughter Daughter on YouTube. Showing up on uh, Sergeant Slaughter's Slaughterhouse often with Zazel, yeah. who is just an awesome guy. Yeah. Fantastic he's guy. Awesome. He, uh, I think he likes Sergeant Slaughter. You know, I'm not sure if Sarge is his favorite wrestler or favorite G.I. Joe, but I think it's close. 
and the ultimate yeah. resource. I'm so glad his YouTube channel came along because I've been a big Sarge fan forever, but there was never like a, a headquarters kind of like <clears throat> there used to be for Yo, Yo Joe for GI Joe and now 3D mm -hmm. Joe's to me is the headquarters for GI Joe resources. Uh, TFW is a great one for Transformers, but um, Sergeant Slaughter Slaughterhouse, if you love the Sarge, it's all on there. His old commercials, his old, even his old matches, which are wild to watch AWA matches. And he's wearing the mail away G.I. Joe figure outfit. It's like mind blowing. Like you're yeah. you're in your mail away outfit. It says G.I. <laughs> Joe on your leg and you're fighting Boris Zukov. This is it's like he jumped out of a screen to fight Boris Zukov. You know, the yeah. evil Russians. So that's, uh, that's cool. It's a great YouTube channel. Yeah. And Zazel does a really good job with it, too. All right, folks. Thanks again. Thanks, everyone, for uh, listening. Hope you're enjoying Arise Serpentor, Arise Week on the channel. Tune in tomorrow for the thrilling conclusion of Arise Serpentor, Arise. Till then, Nerd Mistake. And yo, Joe! You're dismissed. <laughs>